Hey guys, Bill Schimantel, Derek Stewart, BBZ TV. We're up here at Great Bear Lodge. I just dropped my glasses, hold on. We're up here at Great Bear Lake, Plumber's Lodges, and uh, we're gonna show you a little high-tech uh, trolling maneuver. Um, it's being aware of your environment and what's going on. So it's been kind of a tough bite today for us. We've been looking for some big fish, but now we wanna just start whaling on some stuff, catching fish. So what we're doing is just mountain right behind us is a huge island and uh, Derek and I were coming on the outside trolling and uh, we never got bit or anything and when we got to this end sure enough if you look right over the back of Derek you see a pinch down so this is the, the leading the, the far end of this island and the wind is blowing straight through this channel and it's been doing a compression point right here on the inside of that and what it does is it's going to compress the water and it's going to increase flow and you're going to get a current change. And if you look right alongside of that shoreline, if you see kind of like the slack water and then the faster water, you actually got current. So what's going to happen is this water is pushing down through here. It's funneling the fish and the bait fish down. And if you look on this backside, you look at the shoreline, what's going to happen is these fish, these trout, lake trout are going to come in and they're going to start feeding against this short bank right here. So what we're going to do so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up our rods. I have a, a Daiwa Saltiga. Uh, I have a Daiwa Saltiga four piece, or no, this is a three piece travel rod with the Shimano Calcutta 400, 50 pound braid, Maxima, 40 pound top shot. And Derek's gonna tell you real quick on the, the lure we're gonna use. And then we're gonna go down here and we're gonna show you by watching and looking at your environment, and knowing cause and effect that uh, you can put yourself in a position to catch more fish when you're on the water. So what kind of lure are we using there? This is a Eppinger Husky Devil 300 series. It's about a five inch spoon. Not quite as wide as it is long. Uh, it's got a really nice thump on the fall. It does a nice wobble, but we're gonna be trolling through here. And it doesn't really spin. It kind of has a, a wobble and a thump to it, and it makes a really great signature through the water and the Lakers love it. Okay, perfect. We're gonna just uh, start heading down this bank and see if we can, uh, we're either gonna troll, if we see stuff, we might stop and throw on them, but uh, we're gonna work this little bank and uh, see if we can start converting some fish with the Eppinger spoon. Okay, right off the bat, guys, I know on this angle going down, I'm gonna be right in the sun, so uh, just bear with us, and then if we have to, we'll turn around and come back upwind to get a different speed on this but uh, let me see if I can get the boat going in the right direction. There we go. All right. So when I start going down, I know there's a compression point here. And I could see the current. I could see the movement of this water quicker being compressed through here. So, and look at this, guys. Look at the bait. Look at this. You could already see the bait stacking up right on the back side of that compression. So that means these trout, if they go up current, they're going to start working up current and feed through this whole area. So we're going to drop back, going to counter lure back, and what we do is we keep adjusting. We'll let some line out, let the, the lure flutter, we'll engage it, we'll change the uh, boat speed, and uh, the key is, is just trying to keep things erratic, and uh, that's what triggers these trout. The big thing on these trout also is if you get hit, a lot of these big trout, they're coming up and they're, they're killing stuff. If you get whacked and you feel a good thump, you're better off disengaging your reel and letting that bait flutter like it's wounded and it's gonna die. And those trout will usually come back around and take a bigger bite of it and usually you, you get a better hook set. So if you start getting hits and you just try to set the hook and nothing, you don't change anything, you'll get trout to track you for a longer time. If you get hit, and you go, okay, I just got hit. That trout is going to try to kill something. It wants it to die and flutter so it can come back around and eat it. And that's why you see us convert so many fish by boat side when we get trackers and we, we let back and we, we flutter that bait down. Look at that. There's fish already on the back side of this little, little out. Oh, there's a hit right there. Flutter, flutter it back. So that's what you want to do. You get hit, you want to act like that bait is dying. And a lot of times that's what's going to trigger a trout more than adjusting speed or anything else. 
So that was a pretty good quick uh, hit right there. So we know we're, on, we're doing the right thing. And then uh, we'll tear it apart. We'll move into 18 to 20 foot of water. Um, with that cut, you could, you could see the current coming through there right there. With that cut, you know, I can go out to uh, 20 to 30 foot and we're gonna uh, just try to tear apart the water real quick and see if we can make something happen. Coming up to 22 foot. So we got a little bit of a high spot or the edge. Increase the speed. Kick the boat out. There's 19, so we got a little point. Any point you find on this would be just a unbelievable high percentage spot, just like you would see in bass fishing. Trout are no different. They're predators. They're smart. Oh, there's one right there, right there. Just like that, guys. I'm gonna put it in neutral. And you can almost see the current. Like I said, we're right in that current change. Now, it might not be a big fish, but then it might. That's the beauty of this place, you know. One drop, you might catch five, six, seven, eight pounders. And then uh, the next pass you come through and it could be a 30 or 40 pounder. So that's just the beauty of a plumber's plumber's oh, lodges. On, oh, I'm oh, on. oh, double, double. Oh, oh, it came off, dude. I saw it too. That was a good fish. Derek tried to convert. That's at, why even if your buddy's hooked up, do not give up on the cast, fish it all the way back to the boat and still use an erratic retrieve. Yep. And here's the hard part is trying to Trying to maneuver the boat so you don't crash the boat. Fight the fish in the wind. And like I said, we, we actually had a couple fish go at the same time. And that means that means there's multiple fish on this line. So this is just a great piece of information. Let me get this back out of gear. It's a great piece of information to understand structure and cover elements, not only below water, but above water and what they do to compress things, create currents, shadows, and uh, other opportunities, not just for the trout, but for the bait fish and what it does for the uh, enti entire ecosystem. So, not a big fish, but definitely, definitely a point to show. That's a nice, that's a nice yeah. long, long fish. Hopefully now, hopefully he unbuttons so we don't have to, oh yeah! <laughs> And I don't want that happening for a 30 pounder, but um, that kind of shows the point. Okay, so that's a quick little uh, tutorial that uh, from the BBZ TV, from Derek and I on uh, looking at environment and uh, just, just understanding what happens, like I said, above and below the water. And the big thing is Derek, met, Derek actually had the bigger fish and why, why? So, why did you, why did you, uh, you end up catching fish because you were able to convert when there's activity. The, the zone is active and follow that cast all the way to the boat. And um, sometimes the second fish is the bigger fish. So pay attention. Don't give up on the cast. And even when you're reeling back, don't, you know, if your buddy says, hey, I got a giant, then, you know, get in quick, get your stuff out of the way and help him catch that trophy. But, you know, if it's an average fish, Stick with what you're doing because you the double might be the best fish. You create the daisy chain. The daisy chain. And when I'm reeling back in, I'm not just winding straight. I'm paying attention to what Bill's doing. I'm looking at the rod. I'm listening to his body language and watching his reel. And, you know, I, he can tell when he's saying, oh, my gosh, I got one, I got one. Then I'm not going to monkey around. But when I'm coming back in, I'm, I'm, I'm playing with the retrieve because they, they, these trout, they don't like a straight pull. They, they want that lure to do something. You've got to trigger them and you got to make them bite. There you go. Hope you guys enjoy that little piece from the BBZ TV up here at Plumber's Lodges. Next time you guys come up here, make sure you get a hold of Chuck and uh, book your trip now for next year because these, uh, these places get booked very quick. Lifetime trips that you'll never, never get experience unless you're up here. So make sure you book a trip up here to Plumber's Lodges. Watch a lot of the BBZ TV. We do unbelievable tutorials on how to catch fish from tube fishing, trolling flatfish, the Eppinger spoon. I mean, it, it's all over the place and it's uh, just good information. So, hope you guys enjoy this. We'll catch you next time out on the water. I, 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 I figured Derek's behind me doing something. I'm just waving to the camera. All right. Great Bear Lake is an amazing place.
place. All right, we'll catch you guys later.